everyone. Today we are going to talk about a citizen science project that you can do online that goes along with our summer reading challenge animal theme of Tales and Tales. The website is called Snapshot Safari. The link should be in the description below. What is citizen science, you may ask? It is where everyday people like you and I can collect data or help sort through already collected data for use in scientific research. While computers are getting better every day, nothing can quite beat the human mind when it comes to perceiving and interpreting information. That's why human involvement is crucial in processing the research information. The, snap the Snapshot Safari project has cameras that when triggered by movement and heat, take photos, hopefully capturing animals and not just moving grass. As you can imagine, they have thousands of photos to sort through and they ask the public to help. It is your job as citizen scientists to go through the photos and identify animal species that are in the photo and also describe what they are doing. These photos help researchers understand how competing species coexist. Snapshot Safari has different locations that they cycle through throughout the year. Right now they are on a project called Snapshot Serengeti in Serengeti National Park in Tanzania. This project can be very exciting, especially when you get an interesting animal captured in the photo, like a lion. Also, you will quickly realize just how many different species of antelope there are in Africa. It's a lot. Also, it can be very challenging when you are trying to identify a species just by looking at only a portion of their body. It depends on what the camera captures, and most of the time, it does not get a perfect shot. So this is what the Snapshot Safari homepage looks like. So when you click the link below, this is what you will be brought to. It is hosted on a site called Zooniverse.org. It is a site that has tons of citizen science projects that people can get involved with. You can even register or sign in if you've already got an account. If you register, you'll be able to get badges and points uh, from all of the citizen science projects that you become involved with. You can participate in discussions on Snapshot Safari. And it says that they can give you credit for your work. So if you do make some marvelous discovery, uh, being a citizen scientist, they can give you credit, which actually has happened before if you look up citizen science projects. So if you scroll down, you can see that they have 24 projects going on, and this is how many identifications and classifications that has happened from these photos uh, with the public helping. So this is amazing numbers over the years uh, that they would not be able to effectively do without the public's help. They have uh, 23 of their projects are paused, as you can see, because they don't have any new photos uploaded for those. Right now, the only current one is Snapshot Serengeti, and that's the one that we are going to work on. So you just click on the Snapshot Serengeti photo. You can click Learn More, and it'll tell you more about the project. However, I did summarize some of this information in the intro. When you are ready to classify, you'll go up here and hit the word Classify. And it'll give you your first photo. This photo is obviously the animal got way too close to the camera when the photo was taken. But you can, if, if there is an animal that you are unfamiliar with, you can always filter your results. So they have 56 species that they are looking for for you to identify on the Serengeti. But you can filter uh, the animal results by like, pattern, color, horns, tail, and build. Right here I can see horns perfectly. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna filter it by the horns. I believe this is correct. And I can 
already see from the photos that they've provided what it is. It's a wildebeest. And you can always go through these photos up here at the top. They have different angles and they also have different photos if the male and female of the species look different. So you have to keep that in mind when looking at uh, these animals. But if, but if we didn't know that it was a wildebeest, we were like, no, it's not a wildebeest. Then you go down here to cancel and then you can look at one of these other animals. Let's see if it's a buffalo. Then you can go through these photos and look at it and be like, eh, no, that's not a buffalo. Hit cancel. You can look at one of the other ones if you wish to. It's a wildebeest. It's going to ask how many. I only see one in this photo. And what behaviors do you see? Since its neck is down, I'm going to say that it's eating. And then it asks if there's any young present. And no, there is not. So then you'll hit identify. Since there is only one animal within this photo, uh, that species is going to be highlighted. However, you can identify multiple species within the same photo and it'll leave it highlighted. So that's how you know that it's been identified within that photo. It also asks if there's any fire or if you ever get a photo where there are no animals present, you'll just uh, choose this option. We are done identifying this one. Oh boy, here's an antelope. Those are always hard because there's multiple kinds. So we're going to look at the horns on this one. It's always a good identifier. To me, they seem fairly straight. And I can already tell by the side and with the black stripe that is a that it's a Thompson's gazelle. Might want to look at the other photos to make sure. Yes, that is what that is. If you need to, you can zoom in to make sure that these other ones in the background are the same. They look pretty much the same to me. I can't tell what that is. I don't know if that's another one or not. But we're not going to count that one. I only see two right now. So it asks how many. We say two. It asks what they are doing. It looks like they are moving. Are there any young present? I do not see any. Identify. And that's the only thing that we see in this photo. So we'll hit done. Oh boy, a night photo. This one will be really interesting. Okay, so this is like a... canine type animal of some sort. We can hit the like. See if we see anything on there. No. Let's see. Mm. Boy, this one's going to be hard. Let's say it's one of those. Ooh, an ard wolf. Oh boy. I have never seen one of these. That's interesting. I don't think it's one of those, but I guess it could be. Let's look at another animal. No, it's not a big cat. Not a cheetah, not a civet. Oh, this one might be it. It's a 
Fox, possibly? Let's look at the other photos to see. I think this one may be a possibility. Let's look at some of these other ones. Jackal? Oh, it might be a jackal. It also gives a description down below, so you may want to read that to help you identify. Might have changed my mind. I think it might be a jackal. Because his face is much longer than this one's. Yeah. Okay. We've identified it as a jackal. How many are there? One. What behaviors do you see? It looks like it's walking to me, so I'm going to hit moving. Are there any young present? No. Identify. And hit done. I hope you have enjoyed this citizen science project and will continue to support this research by participating. I know I love identifying and learning more about all of the African animals. This citizen science project is where I learned more about the aardwolf. I will leave you with these two facts about aardwolves. They are related to hyenas and unlike its relation, mainly eats insects. Enjoy. Enjoy.